Hi, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Something I used to do more often on my channel before I really was into this retro stuff. It's going to be a light bulb teardown. Let's get right to it. So I have a real fascination with how cheap these LED light bulbs are getting. I picked up this particular light bulb at the Dollar Tree here in Portland, Oregon for a total of one US dollar. For some context and for my international viewers, this is currently, as of the 3rd of November, what one US dollar converts to into these currencies. Let me know in the comment section below if you live in a country that uses one of these currencies if you can find light bulbs for as cheap as this, especially 75 watt versions. Now it's been several years since you've been able to easily find 60 watt light bulbs that hit the dollar price point here in the United States. But to find one that's 75 watts and rated for 1100 lumens that does it, that's quite impressive. Let's take a look at the packaging and see if we notice anything interesting on here. So like I mentioned, 1100 lumens, that's quite good for something that's so cheap. Non-dimmable, now that's not so fantastic. In the past I've tore down some 60 and 40 watt equivalent bulbs that were dimmable. So those have a little bit more of a complex electronics in them than this one, but we'll test to see if this is actually dimmable or not in a moment. As you see here, the packaging on this side is all in English. If I flip it over though, this side is all in French, although they decided to leave soft white in English for some reason, but that's kind of cool. This is probably sold in Canada as well, hence the English and French packaging. Nothing particularly interesting on here. The only thing it does say is, as you see, soft white, and here it lists it as 3000 Kelvin. So that's actually kind of nice. I prefer 3000 over 2700 personally. Of course, the bulb is made in China. Where else would it be made considering it's so cheap? So interesting is in the United States, it says that this bulb was imported by Greenbrier International on 500 Volvo Parkway in Chesapeake, Virginia. And yet in Canada, a different import company, DTSC Imports in Burnaby, British Columbia. So funny that the packaging is universal for two different importers. So warning messages say not to be used with dimmers again and only to be used at 120 volts, 60 Hertz. So not a universal power supply, at least it doesn't say it is. And unfortunately I have no way to test 240 volts. That would be kind of fun. Maybe I should buy a step up transformer. Suitable for use in damp locations. All right, so that's cool. So it's okay to be used outside as long as it doesn't get wet itself. Don't use an emergency exit fixtures. Well, that's a safety regulation and no consumer bulbs should be used in those. It claims on the bottom of the package that it's FCC and UL listed, UL in both US and Canada. Don't know if that's for real or not, but I guess it might be. All right, let's take a look inside the package. Oh, what's this? Caution, changes or modification not expressly approved by the party responsible for compliance could void the user's authority to operate the equipment. That's a strange warning. And love about this very fine print here. Uh, this is just talks about the FCC class B stuff, talking about interference, nothing that interesting. Well, the bulb itself, it's extremely light has a kind of a rattly noise inside. The printing is really faint on here, but it does seem to list some certification numbers on here. I should go look this up, see if I can find anything. Not for use in totally enclosed luminaries. It didn't say that on the box. This probably means that because this is 12 watts actual or claims to be in 75 watts equivalent, it will get super hot and in an enclosed fixture, it will just roast those electrolytics inside on the power supply board. And it says 0519 right here. That possibly is May 2019 date code. I bought this bulb several months ago, so that maybe is correct. Everything on here is plastic. This is plastic. This is plastic. Of course, this is metal down here. It's extremely light. Now let's compare the size to another LED bulb. Here's a Sunbeam 60 watt equivalent one. I think this runs at nine watts. Yes, it does. Keep in mind, if you're gonna use one of these, that your light fixture can accommodate a slightly larger bulb. Here's an actual 60 watt incandescent bulb and the Sunbeam one from my last video and the incandescent are roughly identical in size, same shape and everything. Let me power up all three of these and just do a rough comparison of the brightness and we'll check out the flicker of this 75 watt bulb. All right, first off, let's check out the incandescent bulb. I haven't really used these in a long time, so. 
Ooh yeah. It's bright. It's very warm color. It's really hot right away. I'm gonna unscrew that. Yeah, on the top it says 760 lumens. With an incandescent bulb, the filament is in the center and light radiates out all around. Now I don't have the right equipment to measure that, but just know that when you run these in the same lamp, this will have a lot less light coming out this direction than this bulb because even this part of the bulb is lit up. So the sunbeam bulb seems roughly equivalent to the incandescent bulb in brightness. I don't notice any flicker whatsoever. Now let's try this one, the one we're testing today, 75 watts. Ah, yes. Okay, so significantly brighter to my eyes. I know in the camera it's going to be impossible to tell. Also, I don't see any flicker, any perceptible flicker in this. Definitely the 3000 Kelvin temperature difference is noticeable. Let's do a little testing with a kilowatt and see how much power this bulb draws. And let's check out the power factor. First off, let's take a look at the incandescent bulb. Should draw 60 watts, 58. And if we look at power factor, it's going to be perfect, 1.0. It's a resistive load, that's how it works. Next up, the 75 watt bulb, claimed 12 watts. Oh, and we're getting 10 watts, so a little bit less than claimed. Let's check out the power factor, 0.62. Keep in mind that due to that crappy power factor, if you use a generator to say power up 100 of these light bulbs, you will need to have a lot more capacity than 100 times the watts here. Let's test dimmability. This is a 75 watt bulb, but in this light fixture, I have that 60 watt incandescent. Does a 60 watt incandescent bulb dim? Oh yes, does it ever. These triac style dimmers and incandescent bulbs are like ducks in water. They work really well together. Let's test this bulb, which says it's not dimmable. All right, what's gonna happen? It's off right now. Oh, that's bad. All right, well, it's, there's really no dimmability. It either goes from bright but flickering to kind of on but very, very dim. And there's almost no range to it. Oh, look at that, that's horrible. So you definitely cannot use it in a dimmable fixture, and if you even have a dimmer on the circuit, you can't use it. So for instance, this lamp here has a built-in dimmer that you can't disable, and even all the way full brightness, it's flickering pretty badly, so you can't use this bulb whatsoever. Now let's test light rendering quality. First I'm gonna put in the incandescent bulb into this light fixture. Now the incandescent bulb, things are looking very beautiful. This wood here is cedar plank, looks orange and warm and inviting and very nice. Oh, it's so hot to even touch it. It's only been on for like 30 seconds. Ooh. Okay, let's put the 75 watt bulb in here. Yeah, all right, well, this looks a lot more green. Overall, the color temperature is fine. It's kind of on the cooler side compared to the incandescent, but the way the color in the walls looks, it's just green and the warmth of the orange in the wood is just not coming through. Overall, it looks dull and really displeasing. It's probably fine like in a utility closet where you just need bright light. So the light quality on this 75 equivalent bulb is pretty junky. It of course is brighter than this 60 watt bulb and it uses far less power than it, but is it good at anything else over this incandescent bulb? Well, yes, I think it is. One thing you can do with these bulbs is throw it on the ground very diff hard. If I do that with this, okay, I'm not gonna do that. It would just smash. I threw this on the ground. Let's see if this still works. It still works, look at that. So yeah, pretty darn durable. Let's see if we can take this apart. Oh, that was really easy. I thought I was gonna have to use my vise here to do it, but nope, that just popped right off with hand pressure. Interesting construction here. We have two connectors that say C1 and C2. I wonder if those are electrolytic capacitors that are sticking through the board on the other side. And judging by the sound this is making, there's this probably an aluminum substrate that has these connections on it. And there is the metal that is likely on the inside down here, which is a bit of a heat sink. There's a date code here, 2018-1225. Wait, is that really Christmas Day, 2018? <laughs> Someone designed this PCB? I guess in China, people are working over Christmas, right? That's, that's not a holiday there. We have a total of 12 LEDs. It's one through 12. Ooh, I've had this running for several minutes and ooh, it is hot. I'd say that is close to not being touchable. Now the power is off luckily. And yes, this entire PCB is 
extremely hot. These LEDs are very much experiencing a high junction temperature. So there we go. I have the probes on one of the LEDs and we are getting 11.3 volts if I can if I can see the multimeter correctly. All right, we're on the current measurement mode. Let's see if we can figure out how much current one of these LEDs is using. There we are, the LED is off. I will have to review footage because I can't see the multimeter with my sunglasses on. Well, here's what I figured out. So out of the 12 modules, I measured a voltage drop of 11.38 volts per module. So that would probably indicate that each LED chip that you see here each one of these little modules has three LEDs inside at 3.8 volts each. That's giving us 135.6 volts total for this entire string because they are wired in series. And we measured a current of 72.8 milliamps per module, which is about 0.83 watts per module or about 9.94 watts total for all 12 LEDs. Not bad that the kilowatt was giving us 10 watts which means this thing is pretty damn efficient. Not a lot of power is being wasted dissipating it to regulate the voltage down for these LEDs. Now, because this is such a simple circuit, I was able to draw a little diagram of how this works. So we start right here at what is labeled C2. This is obviously the mains power input right here. It goes into this four pin bridge rectifier right here, BR. And then that goes up to what is labeled C1 there. And that's probably an electrolytic capacitor. I haven't measured that yet, but once we pop this board out, we will be able to see. There is a small little black resistor right there, and that is one mega ohm that is wired across the C1, the connector one, which obviously is a capacitor that is to drain it out so you don't get a shock from that. So from the plus side of the bridge rectifier, it goes through the cap and through one side of the series of strings of all 12 LEDs, and it pops out on the other side, and it goes to these four pins on this copper pad on this IC. And then on the other side of the IC, the negative of the bridge rectifier goes through the cap, and that goes into this top pin here through this sort of copper right there. And it also comes around under the chip over to this resistor right there, which is 8.2 ohms, and that goes into these two pins. There's another space for a resistor here that goes to this bottom pin, and that also connects to this side, to the ground, and that must be for another function of this chip. But I was able to take a picture of the chip, and it is model EG1000A. Doing a quick Google search, found the data sheet for it. So we have Eagle, Chinese company, EG1000A. On page two, we have a schematic that's very similar to this one, although this has a capacitor here on the live input before the bridge rectifier, and it has a small bypass cap here, which is not present on this LED bulb. Also, what's different here is what is C1 on my diagram is the equivalent of being connected here, C1. So I guess we'll have to figure out by taking the bulb apart what that is exactly. Clearly these are the two resistors, only R1 is populated on the bulb, R2 is available as pads, probably to control the current output of this device. On page 3, it has this interesting graph where it shows two current outputs, one at 40 milliamps and one at 20, across a temperature range. And once it gets to about 80 degrees Celsius, the current output starts to drop. I take it that this is something to do with a thermal runaway that might be happening. And as this thing heats up, it probably will pass ADC. And what this will do is it will pull back on the current, which should reduce the temperature of the overall system. And eventually it will reach kind of a happy medium in here somewhere where the brightness will be slightly reduced after a while, but it will stop rising in temperature unlimited because that would absolutely kill those LEDs. All right, I did some chipping away and I see there's a little bit of a notch right here. So that can get this board out pretty easily, I think. Well, just like I thought, C1, this connector right here, has a big electrolytic under there. All right, so you see there's an electrolytic there, and there's also, looks like a resistor down in there, which is likely a fuse, and then a wire. I'm just gonna cut these, because I'm not gonna use this bulb again. There it is. So here's the electrolytic cap. It's a Chinese brand, but 200 volts. 22 microfarad, it's a Provero, whatever that is, HN, LEDH says right on there, 40 to 125C, so 
that's nice. It's not just a 105 degree C cap. Uh, I guess these connectors either are one-way crimps or something because I don't think it's soldered, but that, that doesn't seem to be coming out. And yeah, like I thought, aluminum substrate, and this is as well. This had a pretty nice tight fit in there, which probably gave it a decent thermal interface. Although there's no thermal compound, this elastic glue that was on here might be thermally conductive, at least to some extent. So that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm pretty much amazed at how simplified these are. If you watch Big Clive's channel, he's taken apart lots of LEDs that have a very similar design to this, but they're all designed for the 220 volts countries. And I was just curious if China had come up with chips that did a very similar function that basically take mains level voltage and will do current regulation on on the lower voltages that countries like the United States and Canada and Mexico use. And sure enough, there we have it. So you get a $1 light bulb, and yep, these LEDs produce a pretty crappy quality light. That's not the fault of this, though. If they had just used better chips that would have produced a nicer white, this would have been a much nicer bulb. But the fact that it's 125C cap, and the fact that this current this chip current regulates to try to keep the temperature under 125C, means that this probably would work for a decent amount of time. It's too bad with something like this that there aren't some slits cut in this, perhaps, maybe to allow a little bit of air to flow through and help cool this electrolytic. But I guess if you do that, that's still dangerous. People might stick things through there and, you know, there is mains level voltages going through here. So in summary, is this LED any good? I'd say yes. If you need 75 watts, go buy these. Just don't expect really nice quality white light, but stick it in your utility closet, whatever. And you know what? It says don't use an enclosed luminary. Who cares? I mean, it's so cheap. If it does overheat and die, big deal. And honestly, the fact that this chip current regulates based on temperature means that it probably will just dim out after a while if you leave it on, but it probably will be okay and won't hurt it. So thank you for watching Adrian's Digital Basement. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, I'd love a thumbs up. You can put your comments and questions in the comment section below. If you haven't already, you can subscribe for more videos and hit that little button in the corner there to notify you that I post new ones. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.